Hey guys, it's Jesse. I built this desk for my wife for Christmas and I had one goal in mind and it was to use zero pocket holes and that's what I did. The whole base is made out of half lap joints and dowel joints. I used primarily two tools. I used my compound miter saw and a table saw. This was a fun challenge, especially if you're trying to get away from pocket holes and to expand your uh, knowledge when it comes to joinery. If you're interested in any detailed plans, you can visit my website at mullenwoodworks.com. Now let's get into actually how I built this modern farm desk. So I first started taking the rough lumber, which is, this is all knotty alder, and planing it down to the width that I want. I planed it down to 5 eighths of an inch. And conveniently, my planer went out right before all the projects I planned before Christmas. So I actually ended up borrowing this planer from a friend, a uh, local friend nearby. So then I used my joiner jig. I used this and it made a straight line on one side so I could run it against my fence and have two parallel sides so I could uh, cut it square. Now I didn't cut these to the perfect width that I wanted just yet. I just wanted to cut them down to size so I could actually just work with them on my miter saw. Then I started by cutting off each end of the board. I cut the snipe off. Uh, just so I didn't have any unevenness. So my angle on my blade is about five degrees off of 90. I had four different lengths I needed to cut. Now make sure you don't change the angle of your blade because you want every angle on each piece to be the exact same. So next I cut the lumber I needed for the desktop itself. After cutting the length on every piece, I need to make sure I finalize the width of each piece. So I was doing about three inches on every single piece. The tabletop I left a little longer just because I didn't want to waste any wood and didn't really matter as long as the desktop had the same width that I needed. So after cutting the width, I had six legs, three larger cross beams, two middle cross beams, and three shorter cross beams. I actually ended up adding a third middle cross beam. So I left all the cross beams just a little long, and the reason was because I'm going to go back afterwards and belt sand it down to make it flush, instead of trying to make it exactly perfect before I glue and assemble. After getting the cross beams where I want, I marked them off and it was time to start doing half lap joints. So I left the angle of the blade where it was previously because I knew that's the exact angle that I needed it to be at. I went through and I adjusted my depth stop to exactly half the width of the board and then went through and cut it. The extra piece behind is just to give it a little bit more clearance so I can make sure that there's no rounded pieces and I can slide my compound miter saw back and forth. As you can see I used my electric angle finder to make sure that I had the exact same angle for the legs and for the half lap joints in. They're perfect. Now that all my cross beams are cut, I had to measure and mark all the places I needed to make the half lap joints within each leg. Now for half of the legs, I had to adjust the angle of the blade to the other direction, so I took a little scrap piece and I made sure that the angle was the exact same. So then I went through and cut every half lap joint and there was three in each leg and there were six legs so I didn't end up doing 18 half lap joints and uh, yeah it definitely took a while. So after cutting all the joints I wanted to make sure that they all uh, fit right so I just did a dry fit and pushed them all into place and they were all super snug. So after that I took all three small cross beams and I cut an inlay that a beam will go across the very top and that's what the desk top will attach to. So next I marked and drilled the dowel holes but after doing this I realized I should have glued up the beams first and then did the dowels afterwards so after doing the very first one 
I actually end up just gluing the other two and then going back and doing the dowels after. I applied a liberal amount of glue um, to each half lap joint, put them together, and then stuck my dowels, white oak dowels in between and hammered them through. I used 3 8 of an inch dowels in this and my Miles Craft joint mate made it super easy to go through and just uh, mark and drill perfect dowel holes. After the dowels are all dry, I went through and cut the ends off with a pole saw. After all the dowels were cut flush, I just made my own carpenter's putties with glue, sawdust from the Naughty Alder, and some water. Works really well, and I, it's obviously a very cheap solution. So the best part of the build begins with trimming, at least that for me. And it's the first time I used my trim router, so I rounded over every edge of the base um, to kind of give it more of a modern feel. If you don't have a palm router, I suggest getting one. They're pretty cheap, at least this Ryobi one was, and um, it works with all of my batteries I already had. I got it for 60 bucks off or from Home Depot, and uh, it was totally worth it. After trimming every edge of the base, I went through and sanded the sides just to smooth them out. I start with 120 and work my way up to 300 grit. One thing I forgot to cut when I was getting all my lumber together was the shells, so I had to go back and cut those afterwards. I ended up using a couple new boards, but then I ended up finding a couple scrap pieces that were just perfect length, so I used those as well. So I'm putting in two shelves. There will be a larger one on the bottom and then a smaller one on top. So I glued together the shells just like you would a cutting board. I didn't use any biscuits or anything because I knew there wasn't going to be a lot of pressure on these boards. I used my parallel clamps and then I clamped the sides uh, just to make sure that the edges were even. Then I laid out my top and marked where I was going to use my biscuits. I only put about three in each board just because I know there's not going to be a lot of strain on this table. And Naughty Alder is pretty easy to work with. I'm never afraid to use too many clamps, so um, the more clamps I use, the, usually the less sanding I have to do afterwards. So next was to sand the shelves. I started with 60 grit, worked to 120, and then 220. Then I used dowel joints to attach the shelves to two of the legs. I did this because I kind of wanted uh, a floating shelf look and I knew that this would be an easy way to do it. Now while I was attaching the Bessie clamps to sure up the dowel joints on the shelves, I was using my speed square pretty often to make sure everything was going to be square and flush and nothing was crooked. So next I attached the top cross beam with uh, the third set of legs. <laughs> 
I also attached a back cross beam with two biscuits and glue. I just forgot to film it, so it's not So then I went through and cut the slots for my tabletop fasteners. Um, I forgot to do it earlier, so uh, I had to do that again while uh, the glue was drying. And after the glue dried, the base was finished. And it was time for finishing. I used armor seal on the base and the top, and I can't tell you enough good things about it. It is absolutely fantastic. So I applied uh, three liberal coats on the base, and in between each coat, I used uh, trip or quadruple zero uh, steel wool to basically sand it down um, and get any flakes or sawdust that was left off, and uh, it worked great. So I let about eight to 12 hours in between each coat before I started sanding with the steel wool. So I started sanding the tabletop with 60 grit. I went through every seam and made sure that there, uh, it was as even as I could make it. And I used my level to make sure that uh, there's no uh, hills or valleys. I started using epoxy for all the holes. When you're using knotty alder, you usually get quite a bit of knots. And so I used the Gorilla Epoxy. It's like $5 and it actually worked for the entire top. After I let the epoxy sit for 24 hours, I went back and sanded uh, all the epoxy down. I actually used my chisel to get the most of it off, and then I took the, my sander and sanded 60 grit over it again and made sure it was flush. After doing 60 grit, I moved to 120, 220, and then I actually used this 400 grit uh, Diablo sand net, and it is fantastic. One thing I do to make sure I'm sanding evenly is I just take a lead pencil and draw a squiggly line throughout the whole table and then I make sure I sand that line completely off. Next I trimmed the edges. I did the same thing as I did to the base. Um, I just took it, uh, my trim router, and I routed out uh, a round over on the bottom and the top of each side. Whether you do a chamfered edge or a round over, I think trimming it out actually gives it a more finished look. Since I'm using Armor Seal, which is an oil-based product, I use mineral spirits to raise the grain of the entire top. And then I finished it off with a 400 net sandpaper as well. Best thing about raising the grain is you get to see any blemishes that you had and then it actually shows you how much dust was left on it even after blowing it off and wiping it off with a paper towel. Now for the most rewarding part of the build, applying this armor shield is freaking fantastic. It's really easy. I just used a, an old t-shirt or a rag, um, went through and applied liberally, and then if there was any puddles or anything afterwards, I just wiped them off with the drier part of the t-shirt. So general finishes says to leave 12 to 24 hours between each coat. I probably did closer to 8 hours, and it worked out just fine. Um, but Probably the longer you let set, the more time it has to cure, the better it is. Um, but eight hours worked great for me. Between each coat, I used quadruple zero um, steel wool to sand down any leftover fibers or any um, stickiness left over from the armor seal. So all I had to do after it was done drying was attach the top to the base. So I used these uh, tabletop fasteners from Amazon. They're from Rock Hardware. They're very cheap but they work great. So this was an absolutely awesome project to do. It was nice not using any pocket holes whatsoever and just 
only screws to attach the top. It was a lot of fun, it challenged me a ton, and it was definitely worth every minute. If you want plans and instructions, make sure you go to my website at mullenwoodworks.com. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more updates and more videos. Thanks for watching.